Hello everyone. We are on our second session of the day, the middle child of our virtual conference. It's Wednesday. It's three o'clock. It's the middle child session. So, um, but it's still very important. It never gets forget or never gets forgotten. This is going to be a great one. I am Rachel, the online community manager for the Gypsy Nurse. Welcome to our 2021 virtual conference. I'm here with our CEO of the Gypsy Nurse, Steve Curtin. Hello, Steve. Hey, Rachel. Good to see you again. And that's an interesting way to look at uh, look at today's events, the middle child of today's events. <laughs> but, uh, but, but clearly, uh, this is going to be a great session. I'm really looking forward to this one. I know the community is going to be looking forward to this one. Uh, Certainly, uh, everybody knows that uh, pay packages and, and compensation are very important to the travel nursing community. So this should be a real good one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, we have tons of giveaways. I know you have a few things that you want to say to the nurses and, um, you know, thank them for all that they've been doing. So I'll let you take that away. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, thank you. No, I just I want to take a moment as uh, the CEO of the Gypsy Nurse. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And I want to thank our travel nurse community for all that you do, particularly during this COVID pandemic. The Gypsy Nurse's mission is to support travel nurses. And we hope you find this session and the others we've planned for this week to be informative and helpful in your travel nursing journey. Please remember to visit the gypsynurse.com spring virtual conference agenda under the events tab for a full list of all of our virtual events this week. Please bookmark the Gypsy nurse.com as your source for travel nursing resources, including over 150,000 jobs from over 65 top agencies, housing options, and great content from experts that we publish daily to help you on your travel nursing journey. As a reminder, these sessions will be recorded and available on demand on our website after each session on our 2021 virtual events page. So if you've joined us late, if you want to share this with somebody, don't worry. These are all available on demand essentially immediately after, uh, after the event itself. The Gypsy Nurse is the number one destination for travel nurses, and we want to thank you for your support of our community. Today's session is going to be a great one. I would like to thank Jean Cook and Derek King from Travel Nurse Across America for joining us today to talk about pay package comparisons and negotiations. We know that's a very hot topic in the community, and we're excited to have uh, Jean and Derek join us for this discussion. So, Rachel, back to you. Yeah, definitely. And on top of that, great knowledge that we're going to have uh, today. Um, we have tons and tons of giveaways going on. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can win some awesome things. So the first thing you want to do, um, you want to register or log in onto the gypsynurse.com. When you become a new registered um, user, you'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. On top of that, if you come to our events page that Steve was talking about down here and scroll down and how he was saying you can watch these on demand, we have them all linked right here. So whatever you prefer to watch it on, we have it right there. Um, so you can just scroll down. You can also see the upcoming sessions as well and see who else is left today. Like tonight, we have RV Travel Nursing, which is a really hot topic as well. A lot of it great is today. I think today was like our hottest, hottest topic of them all because with COVID, a lot of people are moving to the RV life because housing was such a disaster during COVID. So a lot of nurses are actually moving on to RVing. So we'll talk about that later tonight, but you can also um, register to win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card by registering here on the events page. And then for today's session, um, if you comment, interact, um, ask questions and everything, you'll be entered to win in a different $100 Amazon gift card. Um, and TNA is actually giving away a TNA backpack with an Echo Dot. So two Ooh. people in this session will win either an Amazon gift card or a backpack with an Echo Dot, which I heard the backpack is amazing. Um, Gene and Derek were just talking about the backpack. So yeah, this is um, where I get very disappointed, Rachel, that neither you or I are available to win any of these prizes or be eligible I for any know. of these gifts. When I started hearing gifts like that, I'm a little jealous, but we're, we're not going to compete with anybody out there for those prizes. Yeah. It's all for you guys. So you guys get in there and, you know, ask your questions and get in there and give them some feedback. So, and like Steve said, pay is another hot topic in the network group every day. I see screenshots of, hey, is this a good pay? Um, are these good benefits? So we took advantage of that and we brought on some two people who know the most about 
pay and, um, you know, negotiations. Uh, Jean, she regularly works with groups of travelers, coworkers, and in the industry on educating um, that will allow them to make the most out of their trip make the most out, out of traveling in their offers. So she really wants to help you out there. Um, Derek is the senior director of recruiting and training uh, for Travel Nurse Across America. And he's been recruiting since 2002. So that's almost 20 years of experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them on so we can get started. Hi guys. Hello. Good afternoon. Hey. Yeah. Okay, Jean. Hey. Great to have you join us. Thanks for, thanks for coming on today. This could be a, uh, a very popular topic, uh, <laughs> certainly as you guys know and live it, uh, uh, compensation and pay package comparisons are, are a, a way of life in many respects for travel nurses. So it's great to have you guys on and, and have, your, uh, have you provide expertise to the community about the best way to go about that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you. We'll get started. Okay, so there's our screen. That's our ticket to go, Derek. So thanks everyone who's joining us today. Uh, we're going to talk about pay package comparisons and negotiations. We're going to talk about the components of pay packages and, and where there are similarities and where there are differences across what you might see different uh, assignment opportunities within an agency or comparing across agencies. Uh, but before we start talking about the details, uh, we want you to think about and know what is important to you as an individual. All of you are different. Some of you are in this for the money. Some of you need benefits. Some of you want to be taken care of with kid gloves. Some of you would rather put it all in online at midnight and not talk to anybody if you don't have to. Uh, we would highly, 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 highly advise you to think about what's important to you. Derek is uh, the leader for us in making us think about the compensation pie or the pie that is available uh, to pay the packages of our travelers. So we put this pie on here for you to think about these three things. There's only one pie and, and what you're doing is dividing the pie based on what is the most important to you. If you look evenly at dollars and the available benefits and the service level from the agency, then your pie is going to be broken up evenly like we have here. But if you want lots of benefits and a high level of service, your, your value of your dollars is going to go down because there's only so many dollars to be given. So in that example, you might see it. Oh, I went to the wrong side. My bad. You might see it look more like this. If you want a lot of service and you want a lot of benefits, the dollars are just going to be a little bit less because there's only so much of a pie there to give. You might be a person who wants lots of dollars and is less worried about the benefits and the services because you'd rather just have the money your pie might look like this. But we want you to really, really, really think about what is important to you so that you go into comparing your packages with that knowledge versus getting that confusion of what is the most important to you in with what can already be um, a, a bit sophisticated thinking to get through comparing the pay packages that are available to you. Derek, what else would you tell our travelers about the pie and, and how to think about what's important to them before they even start considering their components of their packages? Well, I mean, a couple of things to think about. The reason we say the pie is, the, is, is you have to split up the pieces of the pie versus the actual pie itself is that in general, the agencies, when, when they're talking about particular jobs, usually dealing with similar or exact same um, bill rates. So then it just boils down to um, how, you know, how do you want that amount split up? Most of the agencies are going to be parting with about the same amount of money um, from agency to agency, but some agencies will have, uh, may not even have certain benefits that you value. And therefore, naturally, the uh, dollars and the service might be a little bit higher. Um, or within the agency, you may select certain benefits that 
infringe upon the dollar amount or you may waive certain ones that make it go bigger. So it's not just from agency to agency, but even within the agency, what is the, what is it you're looking for? So there's, there's lots to, um, lots to choose from. And um, sometimes it's not that easy to, to see because no one, no agency is going to say we have no service or we have no benefits. You have to do, you have to do a little digging and it makes it, you, you have to kind of see the apples to apples, which sometimes isn't that easy to do. On the comparison. Yeah. Now, making all those comparisons, apples to apples can be, can be the most difficult part. Uh, and I believe as part of this conference tomorrow, I don't know if it's morning or afternoon, but there is a session for all of you on how to select an agency, how to select a recruiter. Should you have more than one uh, that you deal with regularly is, is just one sufficient for you. So they'll talk more about those agency differences too, but level of service is important. And, and guess what? Uh, we happen to work for TNAA and TNAA has a business model. We happen to be on the higher end of service. We, we believe that's where we're best. And, and those kinds of travelers that like the service and the benefits are drawn to us. But there's nothing wrong with any business model that an agency selects. And some agencies are very hands off and very technology oriented. So thinking about what that means to you. Do you, do you want to have to do all of your QA yourself? Do you want somebody to walk you through doing it? Those are important questions for you to know the differences on and what the value of that is to you, because it, it's sort of like stopping at the, um, the corner uh, quick stop, quick trip, come and go, whatever you have, sheets, whatever you have in your part of the country. Uh, you're going to pay more for milk if you run into one of those, but it's for the convenience of running in and getting out versus going to the grocery store and having to walk all the way to the back of the store, et cetera. You, you got to know what the value of that is. Is it worth the extra buck uh, for the convenience? Is it worth uh, a few cents less on your pay for the service? The important things for you to think about before you dive into comparing packages. Now that we've thought about that, we're going to actually look at some of these pay package components. Um, oh dear, it switched from slideshow. Let me put it back. We're going to think about the pay package components. So the first one is the hourly rate. So this is part of those dollars, right? Um, hourly rate for the most part is hourly rate, but there are a few eccentricities. Um, you may be working an assignment that has built in overtime because it's over 40 hours in a week or it's in California and you're working greater than eight hour shifts in a day. Uh, you may have an assignment with some weekend or uh, preceptor or charge premiums that are added to your hourly rate. So just the hourly rate by itself is probably one of the easier components to compare. But if you're comparing an assignment that has some overtime to one that doesn't, you know, that's a consideration. If you're comparing being a preceptor to not, there's probably some dollars there, but are, are you up for a preceptor assignment? Derek, what else would we tell them about the hourly rate piece? Um, I would just say over the years on the hourly rate piece, something that's come up from time to time is, Shouldn't it, shouldn't there be like one minimum rate that should be hourly? Uh, it seems like commonly it might be 20, for example, and it might say, hey, be weary of contracts where the hourly rate is less than 20. Um, and there is some, there is some validity to that. But one thing that uh, you really have to think about is it's, it's easier if you just come up with one number. But if you think about it, the, the way that number is derived is, really what do nurses in a particular state make so nurses in california in general make more than nurses in louisiana therefore the hourly rate part of the equation is going to vary if you keep them the same throughout yes it's easier but it's not necessarily going to benefit the nurse the best um, by keeping every single one of the hourly rates the same um, they're not going to fluctuate a lot because we are all in the United States and the rates aren't going to be that different, but, but you should expect something in Massachusetts, uh, a minimum pay rate for a Massachusetts nurse to be a little bit higher 
been a nurse in a lower paying state. And so that's just something that comes up from time to time. And, and there is a limit. Um, you wouldn't expect your hourly rate for a nurse to be $8. That's not reasonable, even with the other parts of the pay package thrown in. You have to be careful about how um, how low you do go in, when you're putting your uh, package together. And mo all of the reputable agencies are going to be aware of this. And they would be, um, they're not going to put you in any jeopardy because they would be putting themselves in jeopardy as well if they're ready to be too low. Um, so that's just a topic that comes up from time to time and it's, and it's, a uh, it's valid when it's brought up. Yeah, there are rules and regulations that we all have to follow, uh, related to reasonable minimum wage. So to Derek's point, all reputable agencies that are paying attention to those rules and regulations are going to have solid, uh, minimum rates that keep the traveler and the agency in good stead with those rules and regulations. Uh, there is a little bit of interpretation across agencies about exactly how to do that. So to Dara's point, you probably are not going to see huge swings. And if you do see a huge swing, that's a really good question to ask uh, both of those agencies, uh, your recruiter, your contact there about those dollars uh, so that you can understand. The next part, great big part of uh, uh, next to hourly rate, there, there's a method to our madness in, in the order of the bullets on the page. So, so ne next biggest part of a traveler pay package is generally per diems. Um, are there times when you could be a commuter, local, whatever uh, uh, title or name? descriptor, various agencies put on that, yes, that's possible. And that could tie into the taxable or non-taxable component of this discussion. But your per diems, uh, and one of the things we forgot to say, Derek, uh, we recognize uh, folks and travelers that we probably have everybody from, I've never traveled before and I'm learning to I've done 20 assignments and I wanna see what I might not know yet. So we're going to try to cover all those grounds for everybody. So for our newbies considering uh, traveling out there, what are per diems? That's the reimbursement that you will get from your agency for the duplicated living expenses that you're having to pay because you have your back home home and you have your lodging that you're having to acquire and live in at your travel assignment. Um, and I say du duplicative or duplicated expenses, and that's a very important, important, important piece. If you are duplicating your living expenses, that makes your per diems a reimbursement to you of expense, and that and reimbursements of expense are not income tax or Social Security or Medicare tax. If you are not duplicating expenses or you have some other reason that your tax home doesn't work or you've been in the same area too long. We're not going to get into all those rules here. There, there's no, uh, there's no time for that. And it would be a heavy tax advice that you didn't come to here today, but there are times when your per diems can become taxable earnings. And if you're looking at different packages, if you're looking in the same area, and one agency is is quoting non-taxable and the other one is quoting taxable or you could be looking at two very different locations which might make you taxable or not there's a very big dollar amount attached to whether your assignment is a reimbursement of expenses or whether it's taxable earnings what have you seen in your experience derek that helps our folks think through that uh complex component well to me, when I think of this over the years, I have talked with nurses before that have, have been on travel assignments even, and they were not made aware of that the fact that you have to qualify. It's not that it's a perk of travel nursing. This is not, uh, it's, these aren't rules set up by the agency. It, the IRS is the one that sets these rules that we have to go by. And so there shouldn't be a lot of very uh, variation from agency to agency. But the agencies, just in general, so full disclosure, we want a nurse to qualify for the per diems to be tax-free. 
Because yes, the nurse benefits greatly by not having to pay taxes on the per diems, but the agency doesn't have to match with employer taxes any dollars that the nurse isn't paying taxes on. So it benefits the nurse and the agency when these per diems are not taxed. So we want you to qualify, but just because we want you to qualify doesn't mean that you do qualify. The IRS is the one that, that sets up those uh, the rules. And so you have to make sure that you are complying with these rules and don't mistakenly think, oh, this is just a perk of traveling. I get tax-free money. Um, and the rules get, uh, they change as you travel. For example, um, you have to think about things when you are, when you've been traveling for more than a year or so that you may not have had to think about when you first set out on your initial travel assignment. So you want to make sure that you've picked an agency and a recruiter that will at least keep you alert to this type of information. Um, so those are just some thoughts that come to my mind when I think of per diems and what I've seen over the years. Yeah, that's exactly right. You, you must qualify for the non-taxable reimbursement. Um, the longer you travel, the more those rules can change. Some of your situations can be, get very uh, complex. For example, at, at our agency, and I'm, I'm assuming others, we have a group of people who do this work for every assignment. If it's complex and they need assistance, they have a person they escalate it to. When that person needs assistance, it gets escalated to me. And when we still need additional assistance, we have tax experts that we will get a hold of for those most sophisticated situations. So part of our advice, not only in comparing comp packages, but to Derek's point of being compliant and staying that way is to have a tax advisor that is a tax advisor that works with people who travel a lot for business. Um, not all tax people have that expertise. So ask a couple questions like that. There are some uh, tax firms that are specifically oriented to travelers. One of them that we send folks to that I believe a lot of travelers out there uh, use is Travel Tax. So traveltax.com, uh, they've got a really good website, even if you choose not to use them to prepare your taxes. But this is a complex and sophisticated issue uh, that you owe it to yourselves as a traveler to understand some basics and, and know that in your comp, cap, comp package comparisons and know that in the service level and the recruiter and agencies that you choose to travel with. So next component that we're going to look at, uh, I like to know what my take home check is going to look like. Most people do, right? Okay, well, that, that gross amount of salary, that's great. But, but what all is going to come out of that tax wise? What is my take home? What do I got to spend going to look like? So most agencies will give you an estimate of your take home pay, uh, your, your estimate after tax withholdings on the quote that they give you. So one of the things to be aware of is that income tax withholding is part of that number and Social Security and Medicare tax is part of that number. Not all agencies use the same percentage when they're helping you look at what your take home pay number. Uh, I've seen 15%, I've seen 20%, I've seen 25% from various agencies at various times. So when you're looking at your packages across agencies and maybe even within an agency, if they have different types of tax, estimated tax rates assigned to different parts of the country or something, for example, you, you want to think, look at the gross pay and look at the net pay, but think about if, if you're looking at about the same area or maybe even the, almost the exact same job from two different agencies and the gross pay numbers look very similar, but the net pay numbers look different, that's probably because the agencies are using a different tax rate percentage in helping you estimate your take home pay. Um, another thing uh, is uh, we don't know all of your individual financial situations. So the estimate the agency makes is what we hope will cover the large majority of travelers. 
But you need to think about, too, that that number might not be your take home, depending upon your individual circumstance. And there's been some interesting times uh, during COVID and, and other moments of what tax rate should we use for net? What, what have you been seeing on that, Derek, that helps our folks? Yeah, so pre-COVID, the, 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 at our agency, for example, we, we felt like we had a couple of different rates, one for those that qualified for the per diems to be non-taxed and those that were taxed. We kind of used two different rates and almost always those rates ended up being conservative. And so we would state on our quote what the what the rate would be, and it would be pretty close to accurate. Um, but during COVID, when the rates really went up for some specialties in particular, that you kind of had to throw that out the window, so to speak. It still gave the estimate based on a, a particular rate, but you could pretty much expect that your rate was so much higher than that, that you were going to end up paying more in taxes. It became a lot harder to guesstimate what tax bracket and what take-home pay would be. Uh, again, in a way, it's, it's kind of a good problem to have from the standpoint of you're making so much money, it's throwing the uh, throwing all of our estimates out the window, but it did become harder to truly get an estimate on what the take home piece would be. So that was something that uh, certainly in the last year has been something we didn't have to really deal with before. Mm -hmm. so, so when using that as a comparison, know that the rates different agencies use could be different and know that um, the higher the pay of a package, the more likely that there's going to be more taxes than any agency might estimate for you. Uh, be, be aware of those things as, as you choose your next assignments. Um, this next one is one that Derek is way more well versed in than I am. So I'm just going to give a couple sentences of intro, intro and, and Derek's going to tell us all about it. Uh, all of you know that you can be low census out of a shift, even partway through a shift sometimes. And how that works for you newbies potentially coming from a perm situation, how that works in a perm situation versus how it works for travelers is very different. And it can be very different across facilities and agencies can also treat that very differently. So I'm gonna let Derek tell us about some of the different facility rules and different methodologies that agencies have chosen to use. He's going to clue us in to some of the more commonly seen things so that you guys can think about what that might mean because the same job, two different agencies, this could be different. Um, two different hospitals in the same city, these could be different depending upon those rules. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about this after we've talked about hourly rate and per diems and um, and really sometimes when you're when an, someone is trying to compare a pay package from one agency to the next. None of that stuff is going to matter relative to what their policy is on low census potentially. Um, and so what has happened is there's there's so many different contract terms and a lot of times the hospital most of the time the hospital will have a clause that says, for example, hey, every two weeks, we're allowed to cancel one shift without penalty. Okay, well, that's a pretty impactful amount. Potentially, you're talking in a 13-week in a assignment. If they were to cancel the allotted amount of shifts, that would be six shifts. That's basically two weeks for most people's work, two weeks worth of work that could be canceled during the 13-week assignment. Um, so how do the, how do the agencies um, treat your pay when you are called off for low census. Well, what has ended up happening is the term has become guaranteed pay, which is in many respects very much a misnomer. It is not really a guarantee. What it is guaranteeing is it is guaranteeing that the nurse will have the same guarantee that the agency has. So if the agency has a very has the the guarantee of only five shifts every six weeks, then we're going to guarantee the nurse five, five shifts every six weeks. That's what guaranteed pay has come to mean. So a lot of times when a nurse finds out they get their paycheck and it's not what they're expecting is because they didn't know what their agency's definition of guaranteed pay was. And for the most part, there's our, there are two camps for guaranteed 
pay. One is there's going to be a lot of agencies. In fact, I would say the majority of the agencies, when the hospital is allowed to cancel a shift and it's known, it's put on the nurse's contract, their, their attitude is there should be no expectation of pay because the agency is getting no pay. And therefore, they the nurse will miss out on the opportunity to make the hourly rate. And the nurse will also either not get paid their per diems or their per diems will be retracted because they didn't get all the hours that they're supposed to get. Again, it's not the nurse's fault they didn't get the hours, but that's how they'll treat it. The other camp is, and there's there are several agencies that do this, but it is by far the minority, will say, all right, you're still going to get your per diems, but on that shift that you were called off for low census, you will miss out on the opportunity to earn your hourly pay, but you will still get your per diems. You will still get to keep your per diems. Well, that can end up making a big difference. Um, the per diems are usually in the thousand or more per week range. And as I mentioned earlier, a hospital that can cancel once every two weeks, potentially calling off six shifts, that's the equivalent of missing two weeks of pay or with one agency, two weeks of pay, including no per diems for two weeks with that other group, you still get the per diems, but you don't get the hourly rate for those shifts that you missed. That can make up a difference of minimum thousands of dollars. So it does make a huge difference to explore how is your agency treating low census? Um, and what is the, what is their definition of guaranteed pay? Every agency says they have guaranteed pay. The definitions are not always the same. So that's really important for you to ask your recruiter, what happens when I get called out for low census? So summary there is not all guaranteed pay is created equal. <laughs> they, they are different across agencies and different across facilities. And there's a reason that we sandwiched low census impact on your pay in between the the payout components and the benefits, uh, you can consider that part of your pay. You might consider that a benefit, uh, depending upon how deep or, or improved uh, guaranteed pay is at one agency versus another one. It's almost like a low census insurance. How much insurance uh, do you want to buy and how much protection do you want from, from being low census? If, if you don't, and this is back to our pie that we were looking at earlier, if you think of this as a benefit, uh, if you're not too worried about that and you just rather get the hourly pay, then know that. But if, if that's important to you or somewhere in between, uh, know what that know what that means to you as well and what the impact can be on your assignment. Uh, speaking of benefits, those are on our list next. There's, there's three kinds of benefits. Uh, there's insurance benefits, there's retirement benefits, and there's uh, sick leave. Now, there are some other things, don't get me wrong, but those are the, the big three, right, in the world of benefits. Uh, insurance, um, it's not only, now, it, medical, the biggest one, dental, vision kind of insurances seen next, but those aren't the only kinds. And it's not just how much does the insurance cost you, but what coverage are you getting? Um, I almost want to say the quality of the insurance, but depending upon your choice, you know, you may be okay with a higher deductible, less coverage, and it costs you less. You, you might not, depending upon, again, your individual situation. So don't look at just what the insurance costs, but get some basic idea of the program that's being offered to you if, if health insurance, dental or vision type things are important to you. And also consider all the other things that can be offered. There are uh, employee assistance programs, there's short-term disability, there's long-term disability, there's pet insurance programs, there's um, health concierge uh, assistance and finding services programs. Uh, there are student loan payback programs, you name it, um, you name it, there's probably some insurance out there for you. So it, it does your agency offer the insurances you're looking for and what are the costs? I can promise you in pretty much every instance, 
the cost you're going to pay for an insurance program through an agency is cheaper than if you were to go find the same insurance yourself because the agencies are buying this insurance for a group of people and group rates are pretty much always less than a single individual rate. So do think about the opportunity to buy those programs uh, through your agency and which ones are important to you. Um, retirement wise, we did a session yesterday, hour long session with an expert on 401k and IRA programs. Uh, I would encourage you to go watch that one if you want to think about retirement savings. But the nuts and bolts of that for today's conversation is some agencies have a 401k and some don't. And similar to uh, what we said about low census uh, guidance, not all 401ks are created equal. Some of them you can put more money into than others. Some of them have a zero match or a bigger match from the employer. Some of them have waiting periods before you can participate and before you uh, are fully vested in the employer match that's been put into your account. So just having a 401k isn't the only piece of 401k. Uh, there's also different rules around what type of 401k that employer has, that agency has, and which rules they've selected within the choices available to them to implement. So if retirement savings is important to you, I would encourage you to go watch that session from yesterday so you can think about opportunities of 401k versus IRA and learn some questions to ask or some things to look up about your agency's program. Uh, the longer you stay with an individual agency, generally the better from a 401k perspective, but you can hear that in that uh, session from yesterday. And then sick leave. Uh, sick leave is mandated uh, in many states, but it is not required in the whole country. So some agencies provide sick leave only in the states where it's required and only what's required. Some agencies provide it across the whole nation. So it doesn't matter what state you're working in, you earn it and can use it anywhere you are. So understand the sick leave coverage. Uh, that can be one of the pieces of benefits that can make a big difference to you, uh, depending upon your, your risk tolerance there and what you like to see. What I forget on benefits, Derek? Um, I mean, I think about with insurance, that's one of the things when I'm, when I'm talking with a nurse, I can almost sense the boredom creep in as soon as I mention insurance. And so I, I kind of have to make sure that I, I just kind of talk about the highlights of the insurance piece. And to me, one of the things it's, it's always cost is a huge thing. I mean, it's probably the biggest thing is cost, but I always want them to, to look closely. Usually if something is a lot cheaper, there's a reason. And one of the big things on insurance in particular is not every insurance that you get has the catastrophic coverage. That would probably be the thing that I would check into because I, I, I just know of people that thought they were covered and they were, but they were only covered for smaller things. Um, and I say smaller things, it can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. And you might think you have a lot of coverage, but if, if that limit is not set, if, if it's 20,000 or a hundred thousand, that's still a limit. And you can exceed that if you have the wrong insurance and then it's up to you to negotiate with the hospital to pay that stuff out so something to look into um, when you're talking about the insurance and then the only thing i'd other thing i'd mention is on the sick leave um you mentioned it's not in every state i would check with the agency's policy on sick leave because i've heard of those being dra dramatically different from agency to agency and it's, it's some for some it depends on what state you're in for Others, it doesn't. Just lots of differences on how agencies administer uh, sick leave. Yeah, some, some agencies, you can only use sick leave in the state that you earned it in. So if you were in, I'll say Arkansas, because that's where I'm sitting today. If you're in Arkansas for six months and you earn sick leave, but then you go to an assignment in a different state, you might not be able to use the sick leave you earned in Arkansas anywhere but in Arkansas. So you'd have to stay in Arkansas or come back. Uh, some allow you portability across the whole country anywhere you go. 
Uh, and those are only two of a myriad of ways that agencies offer sick leave, all of which uh, I hope or I hope and, and would would be pretty sure are, are legal in all those various states. But um, it is something it is something that can be very different across agencies and could potentially make a difference for you on how you compare those packages and and, and decide to think about benefits as a piece of a piece of your pie. Uh, that you're thinking about across different jobs. That in, in an agency that um, if you're working with an agency that only allows you to use it in the state you earned it in, and some states you earn it and some don't, that might even help you pick between the Arkansas job and the Tennessee job or whatever they are that, that you're looking at. Um, the last thing we wanted to talk about today, uh, this maybe is a little bit more for some of our um, our newbies that are that are considering traveling, but but for our experienced travelers as well, uh, we find a lot of times uh, travelers come into traveling, and we try really hard to prepare for this. But they come into traveling assuming that things are going to be very similar in some places to a perm job where they're not. The low census that we talked about earlier being one of those. They, they will assume that whatever their perm job did for them when they were low census is going to be how it works in travel. Derek's explained uh, to us that it's not. Uh, they will assume that all the retirement and the insurance things are the same. They will assume that their sick leave is the same. Another thing that they will assume, and Derek's going to tell us more about this, when you go into traveling, you become a nationwide person. You're, you're no longer in your geography and to an extent your experience level doesn't have the same impact it does on what jobs you're available for. So we wanted to talk to you not today not only about comparing compensation across agencies or between job opportunities as a traveler, but also how you think about it compared to perm positions. So Derek, I know you've got some really good advice for our folks on this one. Well, it's, it's just kind of a talking point when it comes to pay on the perm position versus traveling. Because over the years, I've heard um, you know people that are expressing an interest to start. And a lot of times it is the nurse that has two years of experience and they're ready to start their career as a travel nurse. But sometimes it's the nurse that has 35 years of experience and suddenly they want to join the travel force. And the, 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 they've heard, many, a lot of times they've heard similar things, which is that the pay is great for travelers. Well, for the two year nurse, it, it probably any job is a great paying position when they take a travel assignment um, based on the bill rates and whether they qualify for the per diems to be tax free or not. It probably still is a step up from what they're currently making in many cases, but it's, but it's regional when you're thinking of, comparing a national travel nurse position to your regional perm position. So if you're, if you're in Texas for, or let's use Arkansas, because we're in Arkansas. If you're in Arkansas and you have two years of experience, probably just about every job we have is going to be a step up in pay. But if I'm talking to a nurse with 35 years, who's been in San Francisco the whole time, much higher cost of living, much higher pay rates in general, that every job we may have may be a step down or a lateral move at best um, for them. And so they would be traveling for different reasons. And I've heard over, over the years, I've heard someone say, I've, I'll explain a pay rate for a particular job they're interested in. And they'll tell me, I have so much experience. It should pay more than that. But that isn't really how it works. It's based on wherever that job is posted, they want a qualified candidate. And for most of them, a qualified candidate will mean two years or more. If you have 30 years, that's great. But if they don't want to pay what they would have to pay if it was a staff type position to bring someone with 35 years over when they can bring someone with two years over. So they'll post the position. They'll look at all the qualified candidates that nurse with 35 years would probably give the nod over the two year nurse just because of more experience, but the pay was going to be the pay regardless of who wins that position. So those are some of the dynamics that come into play when you start talking about traveling versus 
a perm position and how the pay packages will work. Um, but just something to think about. Thanks, Derek. So we've talked about these components and I'm going to do a, a little bit of a wrap up here, but maybe now that we've gone through these components and, and we could spend an hour on each one of these, right? I mean, literally you could, you could spend an hour talking about each one of these individually, but we wanted to give you an overall view and some things to ask and question. And when you see differences to not um, jump to a conclusion where there may be a, a valid reason for the difference that you hadn't thought of. So our goal for today was to give you the advice to think about what's most important to you because the pie is the pie and the pie is going that same size pie is going to get sliced up between the dollars, between the benefits and between the service you receive. So know, know that and know which of those components are worth what to you and what you're willing to give in which areas. Um, when it comes to your dollars, you're going to get uh, a check for. Know about the hourly rate and the guidance that Derek gave us on different states. Know about OTs and premiums playing in. Pay attention on your per diems to do you qualify for the reimbursement non-taxable per diems or do you not? Use your agency's advice, use traveltax.com, NATO white papers, use sources to help you with that. Know that the tax rates can be different between agencies, the tax rates that are used to estimate your take home. How guaranteed pay in low census can be different between agencies. The benefits offerings, are different between agencies. So there's are the places where all of us as agencies make our choices, our business model choices for what we believe works best for the type of nurse, the type of traveler that works best with our industry, with our, with our industry, with our agency. Not all nurses are fit to a, a perfect fit with every agency. That's, that's part of finding your home is the compensation package that fits your needs and what you want out of an assignment. Um, I would like to, in wrapping up here, Derek, thank you many, 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 many times for um, giving us the benefit of your 20 plus years of experience. And I would like to say thank you to Steve and Rachel and, and the gypsy nurse for being this really awesome community for travelers where they can seek the truth and seek advice. It's, it's so important for all of you out there. So thank you for what you do. And, and thank you, Gypsy Nurse, for helping the, them be who they are. Yeah, thank you so much. We just had a comment come through. This has been the most informative session I've ever had on pay packages. Thank you so much. Yes, it was amazing. That was a lot of great information. I see a lot of misinformation in the comments so i'm glad that we'll have this to refer people to in the comments so that way they understand a little bit better <laughs> absolutely no uh, gene and derek this is this is fantastic uh, as rachel mentioned we get uh, you know i would say probably 30 to 40 percent of our discussion in our uh, gypsy nurse travel nurse facebook discussion group 30 to 40 percent is around uh, compensation uh, people asking questions about compensation comparing notes uh, obviously people are trying to uh, ensure that they are making uh, the best choices when it comes to their compensation offers and so forth so uh, but I, I think as rachel was saying sometimes people don't completely understand the components or don't understand how the components work together. So to have you guys walk through that was was very, very helpful. Um, we do have a few minutes left and there, there's a couple of questions and I have some questions too I'd like to ask you. So if you guys can hang on for another few minutes, um, let's go through some Let's go through some questions here. Sherry asks, uh, doesn't the IRS state one must stay in a location of work when receiving per diems? So agencies are not following IR, uh, the IRS rules if not paying out per diems if called off from low census. So uh, that is a deep, deep question I'll ask it you is, guys it to is, comment on. <laughs> it is a deep question and um, it, not to sound like I'm avoiding it, but I'm going to be honest that I'm slightly avoiding it because there is some interpretation around some of those rules. 
And maybe this comes to part of who you are as an individual and a traveler. What level of risk do you want to take on that one? Um, so all IRS, most, not all, some IRS rules have some interpretation around them because they just don't always write them as clearly as they should. And this is one of the areas that has a little bit of interpretation to it. So I wouldn't want to call another agency as, as not abiding by it, but they may have interpreted differently. Um, I would advise you, Ms. Sherry, to think about the importance of that to you uh, and, and potentially ask that question at traveltax.com and get some other sources of advice. Yeah, I would, I would just add to that. If it, if it was important to you, do know there are agencies that pay it. So um, find those agencies. I happen to know one of those. <laughs> Uh, another comment, uh, Krista says, great info. Thank you for the information on per diem taxes and how to compare taxes between agencies. Also good points on slicing the pie by what is important to you. So yeah, I think that graphic was really um, uh, pictures worth a thousand words as they say, and to <laughs> basically show the, the areas of concentration and how to think about the packages, I think makes it very easy. Because again, we see a lot of discussion, the group and, and back and forth about you know how to look at packages. People will say, hey, look at this hourly rate, this is great, but yet the detail behind it or what other things are being offered within that package, I think sometimes people can ignore. We see a lot of information and, and understandably so about the hourly rate. What is that hourly rate? But as you guys just illustrated, there's so much more to take into consideration based on your personal needs and preferences when it comes to comparing uh, comparing pay packages. I do have a question for you guys that, that has been coming up, as you might imagine, uh, a lot over the past few months in the network group, and that is around crisis pay, and essentially the um, what, what appears to be a, a uh, at least the perception of a decrease in rates, generally speaking, in the industry. Um, obviously, with the COVID pandemic, travel nurses were in tremendous demand. Um, as an example, on our job board, uh, we normally have about 155, 175,000 jobs at any given time from about 70 different uh, agencies. Uh, in January, I believe we had uh, a high at a high point, we had 275,000 jobs listed. So it was, you almost know, almost double. Uh, almost double um, from what from what we had. So now we're seeing this the. The, um, the number of jobs is still high. We're around 175,000 now, but obviously it's it's come down. So we're seeing some discussion and the nurses comparing notes in terms of you know uh, the need as well as the pay. The pay seems to be coming down. So I, I'm curious to see your your comment on that relative to the uh, relative to the market. Um, yeah, the market is changing, right? I mean, um, I remember at the beginning of COVID and people were saying, well, this is a new normal. And I so badly didn't want it to be a new normal for, for the world as a whole that I was like, please, no, don't let this be a new normal. But here we are a year later. Uh, and basic economics of supply and demand uh, played a factor. Um, lots of hospitals needed nurses and nurses are were supply constricted and so they were paying more to us to find the nurses and we were paying more mm -hmm. as as related to that to the nurse to go there um i i know that it's difficult to have experienced that higher rate and and now not but as covid decreases as the pandemic goes away that's the natural case of what is going to happen. The demand is not going to be as high and therefore the supply will match it a bit better and the rates will go down. Um, hard to face, but, but part of basic economics. Well, relative to that, um, Jean, um, Kimberly comments, it is supply and demand. Hospitals are recovering and rebuilding staff, so the rates are going to go back down. So that's that's uh, coming from somebody that I assume is in the travel nursing community. Uh, Jason asks, um, I've heard if you decide to buy into an agency's health insurance and take a break between assignments, such as a month, you aren't covered for that span versus if you purchase independent insurance? That's a great question around benefits. So I'd love to hear, love to hear your take on that. Yeah, and I, and I would say, Jason, I would say yes and no, which probably doesn't help you a whole lot, but let me, say, let me explain why I say that. 
with you buying independent insurance, not working is no break. So that part is absolutely true. If you have your own independent insurance and you decide to take a month off, you're good to go. Your insurance will be fine. But this is one of those moments of comparing health insurance between agencies. Some agencies have an opportunity for a short break between assignments that is covered. Um, just to use an example, we, we've tried real hard not to be TNAA oriented. We've tried to tell you about the industry, but to, I think this is a moment for an example. At TNAA, we have a three week break period between assignments where your we, we call it bridge insurance, where your insurance carries. Now, to your example, Jason, going a month. At that point, the insurance isn't going to carry, but you can get COBRA. And all your agencies should be offering you COBRA, bit more expensive, but it carries that same insurance for you. And then when you start back up again with an assignment with that same agency, then you would be back on the regular price plan. Um, don't hold me to that for all agencies. I don't know all agencies prices and methods, but my point being there are opportunities to cover yourself via COBRA or some sort of bridge insurance at some agencies. So if you're thinking about breaks in between, um, find that out uh, so that you know what choice to make. Yeah, Derek, I'm curious in terms of your experience, and you've been doing this for quite a while. What do you, what types of conversations do you have with travel nurses relative to their needs and their stage of life or stage in career? I, I would assume that as you discuss opportunities and packages and benefits and compensation, it would probably vary between uh, a new nurse, uh, you know, just coming into uh, travel nursing versus somebody that maybe, uh, you know, towards the end of their career versus somebody that's, you know, traveling alone and they are their own financial support mechanism versus somebody that's traveling with a partner. How do you take those components into consideration and what, what's some advice that you give people when you're having those conversations? Well, I mean, when I'm talking to a nurse, I'm trying to see what motivates them. It is not always money that motivates people. In fact, a lot of the assignments are driven by a desire to get to a particular location, for example, uh, for whatever reason. Maybe it's a grandmother, maybe it's a boyfriend, maybe it's love of the mountains or the ocean. Whatever it is, it's not pay in a lot of cases. It is location. Um, so if I find that's what, what's going on, then that's, I mean, we're going to look at it. We're going to look at things from that perspective. Uh, it's it's surprising how many times pay initially is brought up as the motivation for traveling but then you find out that they do want to get the most pay they can get but actually they really want to be in the mountains they really want to go skiing so what's the best paying in this in an area where they can ski so the, the key is to find out what is motivating that traveler um again as far as the pay goes for someone that's 25 years old versus someone that's 65 years old, the pay is going to be the pay for a particular job. So if it does boil down to pay being a huge part of it, it's pretty easy for us to sort those jobs and see which ones are going to have the most ring take home pay, depending on their situation. Um, it could be that a particular job for one nurse is going to pay more for tax reasons than it would be another nurse because of her location. So it's a pretty complex um, it's simple and it's complex at the same time, but it's just case by case with the traveler. Why are you wanting to travel? And then let's take a look at what we've got out there. Good news is there are jobs everywhere, um, pretty much everywhere. Or if it's not in that exact spot, it may be really close to that spot and you can get there on your day off or your days off. Excellent. Well, that is a great information coming from somebody that's been in the industry for, for many years. Um, we don't have time to go through them all, but we're getting a lot of great comments and, and thank yous to both of you from uh, our travel nursing community in terms of uh, the information you've provided. Judy says, this was very helpful. I'm a first time traveler. So that's the type of, that's the type of help we like to provide is, is steer people in the right direction. So uh, Derek and Jean, I'd like to thank you both very much for taking the time today to provide this information to our travel nursing community. Uh, and again, if um, anybody has joined us late or wants to share 
share this with somebody, this is being recorded and it is on our virtual events page on the gypsynurse.com. So it will live in perpetuity. <laughs> <laughs> Your words of advice will live in perpetuity and, uh, and that's a great thing. So thank you both very much for, uh, for taking the time today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having Absolutely. Sorry, I'm on mute. You were on mute, Rachel. The the quote of the day, you're, or the quote of the year, you're on mute. First time I've seen you do that. <laughs> I know. I was surprised. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, that um, commented. Um, be sure to ask. Still keep commenting. Um, you know, keep the conversations going like we keep saying. Um, you know, pay is a super important, um, you know, aspect of your life. And like they said, you know, it just kind of depends on what kind of pie you like. So, you know. There's different kinds of pies out there. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. No, it was great, great information. And uh, again, I, I think when you have two people that have been in, been in the industry for a long time, uh, like Derek and, and Jean, have, and, and have had the success that they've had and, and work for a, a, a fantastic company like TNA, it's just, um, you know, it is really helpful no matter what stage of your career you're in, no matter what specialty yeah. you're interested in. It's great to get information like that from, from two uh, travel nursing experts. So it's, yeah. uh, it's great to bring that information to our community. And then at seven o'clock tonight, we're going to toggle over to RV living. Yes. So I'm super excited. Um, we're going to talk about RV living and she travels with her husband and two cats. So it should be interesting <laughs> how that all goes. So be sure to tune in and we'll see you at seven. All right.